I think the origin of the problem in Syria goes back to 2011. You have the Arab Spring, you have a number of uprisings, Egypt, um, Libya, Tunisia, um, and in Syria. And the people peacefully started a protest. And the government under President Assad started to kill them. His reaction to the protest was to shoot. And a civil war, in essence, began because the regime in Syria, the Assad regime, um, is Alawite, which is viewed by most people in the Middle East as a form of Shia Islam. And in fact, the regime is supported by Iran and Hezbollah in Lebanon, which is also a Shiite group. The people of Syria are mostly Sunni. It's about 75% Sunni. So it became, in addition to a conflict of the people of Syria with a brutal regime, it took on the aspect of a Sunni-Shia fight with Shia Iran supporting the regime. And it gets worse and worse because the regime has just been killing and killing and killing, including, as we know, with the use of chemical weapons. That onslaught of the regime against the populace explains why 8 million of them have fled. I think there are two things that need to be done about the Syrian refugee crisis. Um, one is, of course, refugee relief. I mean, I think it is right that countries around the world announce we will take 10,000, we will take 200,000 to, uh, to give relief to people in need. But uh, it's not enough because the Assad regime in Syria is creating these refugees. It's producing them. It is driving people from their homes. And the regime will continue to do that as long as it is there. So I think we need to get that regime out. I think the regime has to go. If that regime is here for another year, you'll see another year's worth of refugees because it is continuing to attack the Syrian people. I'm talking about helping Syrians fight for themselves. The problem has been the regime, which has the army, of course, gets help from Hezbollah and it gets help primarily from Iran. The people fight back and we give them speeches. And I think we need to do more. In fact, if, if you look at the growth of the Islamic State, it's partly, I think, because you have Syrian Sunnis who want to fight back against the regime. We're not helping them. We're not organizing them. And along comes the Islamic State saying, well, fight with us. We're Sunnis. We'll protect you. We'll fight for you. We should not let that happen. And that means that I think we should help organize and finance and arm Syrian Sunni groups that will fight the regime and will fight the Islamic State, which, by the way, you know, is not a Syrian organization. These are foreigners from all over the world. But I think there is a military aspect to this, and we need to be frank about it helping Syrians fight their own fight. There is foreign intervention in Syria. There is intervention by Iran. There is intervention by Hezbollah, which is comprised of Lebanese. Um, so to say that um, you know, the rules are no foreign intervention doesn't do much for the people of Syria who are suffering from this. Um, we should always be cautious about intervening. Uh, but there are a lot of places around the world over time where intervention would have saved lives. In the United Nations in the previous decade, uh, the whole UN adopted an idea called R2P, Responsibility to Protect. And the idea was it is legitimate to intervene if a government is killing rather than protecting its own people. Well, if we believe in a responsibility to protect, there's no stronger case than Syria. In the countries surrounding Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, the UN High Commissioner for Refugees, UNHCR, is doing a lot. To the extent that they're not doing enough for Syrian refugees, I think we are all to blame in the sense that they have no money of their own. UNHCR spends money we give. And recently, um, in the last few months, they've said we, we, are, we are broke and we are going to have to diminish the amount we can spend per capita to help Syrian refugees. Well, you know, we need to do more. And I would say also, there are some very rich Gulf countries here, Arab oil producers, and they need to do a lot more. 
this cannot somehow be a Western responsibility. These are Middle Eastern Arabs, and they ought to have a special role. It is a legitimate concern. If you were running a terrorist group, it seems to me, and you're trying to infiltrate Western Europe, um, what better way than in a group of, you know, 1,000 or 10,000 or 100,000 refugees? So I think we do need to be uh, wary about this. It, it makes it much harder, much more difficult. I mean, God knows. But um, it is realistic to assume that in this mix, there are some people who wish to commit acts of violence.